Now let's go to the next one. My favorite troubleshooting is uh, Citrix because it's so damn hard. It's hard because there's nothing, you can't count on any kind of delay because it could be mouse movement, it could be the clock changing by second, it could be uh, lack of activity on the screen, it could be the user looking at a blinking cursor, it could be a print job, it's all in encrypted, it's hard, and it's all multiplexed, okay? It's very, very hard. This happened to be the most profitable business in my prior company. So it's a Fortune 5 company, the most profitable of Fortune 5. That guy yielded a lot of power. In fact, that guy got his own dedicated infrastructure in a data center. Why? Because he was the most profitable <laughs> unit of the company. So when that doesn't work, it's all hands on deck. His customer was a type of customer where somebody would call in and say, I need to move $80 million from this account to this account. And that agent cannot say, excuse me, I'm sorry, my computer is slow. Okay, that conversation cannot happen. But here's a problem with Citrix, constant slowness. Constant slowness. Okay, and it's going across an MPLS network. So do the usual. Citrix, this doesn't help you as much because I expect a lot of back and forth. I expect all push bits. I expect this type of churn, okay? But still, OCD, there was a little bit of thing there, so I'm gonna go there and I say, oh, okay. That's what triggered my little stop and look, okay? I saw that again, there's another one, there's another one, there's another one, there's another one, another one, another one. Previous segment not captured, okay? Could be just a sniffer or packet, your uh, sniffing device, or you know, I'll just call it a sniffer. Um, dropping it, right? Meaning, just because you didn't capture, or, or Wireshark says, um, acknowledge, uh, acknowledge the segment not seen. That just means that the sniffer dropped the packet, or the span port dropped the packet, okay? But here I see clear example of real retransmissions. So this is a real packet loss going on. Okay? There seems to be a lot of them, so let's count. TCP analysis.flags. And if, we, if you see the bottom down here, it's 8.9%. Yeah, some of it is previous not captured, but look how many retransmissions there are. And you can do TCP analysis, you know, retransmission there as well. So clearly, this is an infrastructure issue. Clearly, you can't have this many packet loss and expect and blame it on anybody but the infrastructure. And guess what? The entire site is having a problem. So he immediately went to the circuits, right? Looked at the ethernet handoff with MPLS. And the annoying thing about MPLS is not a point-to-point -point network. Just because you rule out your ethernet handoff, gigabit handoff, doesn't mean anything. Because it's not point-to-point. -point. So we need to do some troubleshooting. And as part of your toolkit, whenever you troubleshoot anything going across MPLS, there is one thing that you must always check. What is that? Anybody know? There's round trip time, all good answers. It should be consistent, okay? QoS, I'm sorry, who said that over here on the right hand side? There you go. Why QoS? Because it's, it's a stupid technology that's fundamentally broken and it's the bane of your existence because every device has to be configured 100%. It's fighting you every step of the way and one wrong configuration on one wrong router, there goes your QoS, okay? So let me replay. I like to think out loud as I'm on troubleshooting. This was, I think it was a Saturday if I remember right, and it, I can check the absolute time. And all hands on deck, again, is a very profitable and powerful um, business. Okay, so I think Saturday morning. So I'm troubleshooting, and I said, oh, you're going through MPLS. Let's check the QoS value, and the QoS is in what header? IP. It's a header that we don't, Go to too often, except for checking for IP ID, fragmentation, uh, et cetera, right? So I opened up the IP ID, and keep in mind, there's probably 100 people on this call, okay? And then, of course, you know, I was chatting using uh, chat, um, which on a troubleshooting call, chat is great. Why? You make fun of people. What did that idiot say? 
tell me you don't do that. <laughs> this guy's so stupid. He has no idea you're talking about. Uh, anyway, so I'm, I'm thinking out loud. I said, okay, I'm going to check the QoS. I went, oh, shit. I'll censor that out. Why? What class is this Citrix using? Mm -mm -mm. Who uses expedited forwarding? And you're thinking, what's the problem? It's the lowest latency queue. It should get top priority. But what do we do with expedited forwarding class? We drop it and You drop it so you don't completely overrun the network. So every expedited forwarding class voice, for the most part, is rate limited because it's the lowest latency queue. When there's a packet in EF, everything stops and it has to be handled. So you can't let that EF class take over because nothing else will get, go through, okay? But here was my problem. This is a contact center and they use voice a lot. No one's complaining about voice. And I will tell you, contact center agents complain about voice all the time, rightfully so in most cases. And I said, I don't get it. They're not complaining. If, if EF class is so bad, and of course I checked, right? I logged onto the router, MPLS router, expedited forwarding. You check your class map, your policy map, your rate limit. You count the zeros, and I don't even trust that. So I cut and pasted, and I put commas uh, on an Excel spreadsheet automatically. So I know that it's 10 meg, 100 meg, et cetera, not off by a zero. I do all that. And no one's complaining about voice queue, even though I have EF queue drops all day long. How do you reconcile that? As a troubleshooter, what's the next thing that you do? Because this is simple. This is EF and it's packet drop. It's packet drop because it's rate limited. I got it. Why isn't voice being uh, hurt by it? Okay. Maybe it's marked incorrectly. So I checked. I got a packet capture of the default queue. I opened up the packet capture, and guess what all the voice traffic was doing? Default. And you know why no one complained? QoS never kicks in unless there's contention. And there's two types of traffic coming out of this building, Citrix and voice. <laughs> yeah, you, you see the irony, right? Um, but again, why did this happen? It's not, it's, it happened after a change, obviously, but why? Why did this get mapped to voice traffic? What do you guys use to mark QoS policy on traditional routers? Policy maps, class maps using IP address and port numbers, right? And that's an old port number, new Citrix port number that used to be old skinny port number. And it was an old QoS template that got rolled out. Why? There was a standard, but this person said, I've been using this standard forever. I've never had a problem with it. So he never got the updated QoS template that removed this port number because now it's Citrix, not the old Cisco voice protocol. As simple as that, okay? and it caused all kinds of havoc. Now we found it very quickly, but it was because one of my checklists for MPLS is always look at the QoS because, and even that's not enough, why? When you're troubleshooting MPLS cloud, if you have the luxury, capture it as it goes into MPLS and as it comes out of MPLS, because it's on you guys to map your quality of service to what the carrier is saying. Carrier's not gonna screw that up for the most part. They have four or six classes. Your job is to map however many you have into that six and pop it back out to map it to whatever your standard is. And I will, I will tell you, you have it wrong. Because again, you have to be 100% right without ever making a mistake and you can never catch up. So when you're troubleshooting voice or MPLS, make, look, look at QoS because just because it's correct where you caught it doesn't mean it's correct over here. Because all it takes is one router off to the side along the path to break that. Okay? So at a minimum, do a safety or a quick uh, sanity check. 
And you're saying, but Hansang, I don't have sniffers everywhere. What can you do? As a network troubleshooter, what tool do you have at your disposal to spot check that? NetFlow. Do you need to export it? No. You don't even need to export it. You enable NetFlow and you can do a show command to look at the NetFlow table and you'll be able to translate that QoS marking to DACP. Okay? Just be careful though because the TOS and DACP and well-known DACP port numbers can be different. So make sure you're, you map the TOS to uh, EF versus HEX versus a well-known name. Okay, do you know, guys know what I'm talking about there? Yeah, okay. So I'll just show you an example of, again, So that's what the DACP looks like. You should have this printed out and take a look. Why? Because it's confusing. Here's a, it's the same number of bits, by the way, right? We're just reusing it. Okay. So here's a TOS decimal number that's different than the hex number. Obviously, it's decimal versus hex versus this. But notice there are some overlaps here. Okay. You have 48, which is CS6, used by a router but only if you're looking at 46 from a DACP decimal perspective because that's different than the TOS value here. Okay, So when you do the show command on a router, it's iOS or NXOS or Juniper, uh, JunoS dependent. Make sure the column is TOS versus DACP, uh, et cetera, and, and then do the mapping. Okay, Don't jump to the conclusion and um, get the wrong thing. Okay, Yes, question? No. So the question is, any, uh, any uh, concern? So the answer is almost universally no, but you cannot export to two destinations. Okay, so don't do that because that'll take your CPU to 100%. Because why? So we're in a troubleshooting class, so let's troubleshoot. Um, and, and again, a lot of you guys work with routers and switches too, right? So why is it that if you export uh, NetFlow to two destinations, it can cause your CPU to spike? Because anything that ends on a router is what? Process switched. The CPU has to do the work. So anything, every time you export, that's hitting the CPU. OK? Make sense? You can span that, by the way. When you do a span session, you can capture to RP, route processor, or SP, switch processor. And if you do a span port source of RP, then you can catch all the traffic that's going to your CPU. So that's kind of a neat trick that you can use. Okay, so the question, so the thing is sample it. In fact, in uh, the newer hardware, you have no choice but to use sample, right? Um, and then the only other caution that I would say is, uh, and I, even though I said there's no danger in doing it for the most part, is if you have NAT and IPsec running at the same time, um, then be careful because you're, gonna, you're eating up TCAM, tertiary CAM space. Um, so, yeah, don't sue me if you blow up your router. Okay. But again, it's, it's, uh, enabling NetFlow is, uh, it takes very little hit, and especially if you don't export. Uh, when you export, it involves a CPU. Okay. Any question on this one? So these are, remember, these are all easy because I'm teeing it up for you, right? But, but honestly, this didn't take that long to, um, because why? If I didn't look at the QoS, though, I would have been troubleshooting a lot longer, okay? And I, and I would have done things like looking for a bad device and yelling at the carrier because up to my network, from start to beginning, I'm not seeing any packet loss. It's only seeing the packet loss in the cloud. And guess what? Egg on my face if I would have done that. Okay, so this is nothing more than a packet loss on your network. Okay, easy, right? 